It's officially November, meaning even here in California, it's finally cooling down a bit. It's finally time to put on your nice warm jammies, settle down with a hot cup of tea, and play some video games. Look at my pajamas, they're brand new. I can't get them into the camera, there's my foot. That was wildly inappropriate, my apologies. So maybe you're somebody who just bought the Nintendo Switch Lite a couple weeks, or months, whenever it came out, and you're thinking, boy, now I'm stuck indoors because it's real cold outside and who wants to leave the house, right? Maybe you only have a Switch Lite as opposed to the regular Switch Classic and you're thinking, well, I don't want to hold this thing. It weighs a certain amount and I got to hold it. Maybe I want to go through the trouble of trying to put it on some kind of mount on a desk and use a controller to play it for some reason. If that's you, 8-Bit Doe has got your back with this thing. This is the 8-Bit Doe Lite Bluetooth Gamepad, compatible with Nintendo Switch, Windows, and Steam, according to the box. It comes in two different colors. I have the yellow one here. There's also the turquoise one, which, well, it's teal. No matter what they say, I'm always going to call it teal. And that's uh, to match the color scheme of the two, well, of the two cooler-looking versions of the Nintendo Switch Lite. Sorry, gray Switch Lite lovers, you're not getting one of these. But hey, that's fine, because the yellow and the teal are beautiful. Kind of want both, but I have no need for them. I don't even really need this one. I just wanted it and hey, it's 25 bucks. That's real cheap. So what exactly is this controller? Well, if you never heard of 8-Bit Doe, they basically make third-party controllers for the Nintendo Switch, mostly. They also make other ones for other platforms. I think they're teasing one for the Xbox, but they've got some great controllers. I have this one here, which is the SN30 Pro. It's modeled after a classic Super Nintendo controller, but it's got thumbsticks for use on the Nintendo Switch, as well as dedicated trigger buttons. And you know, it, the shoulder buttons and trigger buttons. Now this same company has brought out this little beauty. Inside the box, you'll get, of course, the controller. And when you see it, be sure to take a moment to gasp at how tiny and cute it is. There's also, of course, the instruction manual, which you'll need to figure out how to sync this thing, as well as a nice little USB-C cable for charging. Setting this controller up to sync with your Switch is a lot easier than setting up, for example, the SN30 Pro. Syncing the SN30 Pro, you gotta press, like, the start button and one of the face buttons. That means you're trying to sync up with a Switch specifically because they made it so each button plus start means you're syncing with something else. It's weird, it's complicated, I don't like it. It took me a while to get it set up. With the 8-bit Doe Lite, it's as simple as toggling a Switch in the middle of the controller. S meaning you're connecting to your Switch and X meaning you're connecting to Windows. Now, one thing you might notice about this controller versus something like the SN30 Pro or even the Switch itself or a Switch Pro controller is the lack of thumbsticks. The D-pads, that's right, two D-pads on the 8-bit Doe Lite are actually supposed to mimic thumbsticks. So instead of having one of these bad boys, you use one of these and it's supposed to be a thumbstick. And let me tell you, it is a uh, little unusual to use it in that way. Now this thing is great for 2D games, side-scrollers, games with menu-based gameplay. This is going to be great for that. If you're an old-school purist who wanted to play Link's Awakening with a D-pad instead of a thumbstick, this controller can let you do that. Also, fighting games. This probably works for fighting games if you like using a D-pad. You can use it for Smash, but uh, don't. I tried using this for a bit of Smash, and uh, it's doable, but it's just not as good as using a controller with a thumbstick. And odds are, if you're somebody who loves Smash, you already have a controller that you prefer for that anyway. Now, using the thumbsticks for something like a first-person shooter is just very weird. I used it a bit to play around in Minecraft, and it was, like, it was so odd. It just reminded me of the days of playing shooters on, like, the N64 and PS1 before thumbsticks, well, dual thumbsticks were really a thing. Back then, that was normal, but after years and years of just using two thumbsticks to play around in first person, going in and using a d-pad to look around is very weird. You're just like looking around like real fast, accuracy is just not going to be a thing, but that's just not what this controller is made for. This controller is made for on-the-go use, or maybe you just for some reason have a Switch Lite and want to use a controller. It's about $20 to $30 cheaper than the SN30 Pro, so if you want a secondary controller that isn't going to cost a lot and you don't need thumbsticks, you mainly want to use it for things like platformers, and 2D games, then this is going to be a good controller for you. It's slim, it's light, it's mostly comfortable. I mean, it does feel nice in the hand. It's just a very small, flat rectangle. But when you got to reach up in those shoulder buttons, it's a whole other ball game. Where the SN30 Pro has dedicated front and back shoulder buttons, just like any Switch 
Joy-Con or Pro Controller would, the shoulder buttons on the 8-bit though light are side by side. So it's a lot like the new 3DS or new 2DS XL. Instead of having back and front shoulder buttons, you've got them side to side, with L and R at the corners and then weirdly named L2 and R2 on the inside. This is more to use in the kind of game where you might not use those that often or just for menu navigation. If you're playing a game that's going to rely on using these a lot, there's probably better controllers out there. At least for my hands, they get very cramped holding it like this. This is not a way your hand is supposed to be positioned when playing a game, that's all I'm saying. So ultimately, is it a good controller? Is it a bad controller? I think the answer is... Yes. It's, a, it's not terrible, it's 8-bit though, they make good stuff, it's reliable, it's got good battery life, it charges... <laughs> It's totally usable. I have been using it for games on the Super Nintendo emulator program. What's it called? That app. You know the one. I've been using it for that and playing games like The Messenger, whatever 2D side scrollers I want to play, and it works perfectly. And for 25 bucks and the pretty colors, it might be something at least as a novelty for you to use if you like options and collecting Switch accessories like I do. But if you have no other secondary Switch controllers and you are looking for one, there are better options out there, but you are going to have to pay a little bit more, at least if you want something that's also wireless. As for me, I have no regrets purchasing this thing. I do plan to use it here and there off and on, just because it's cute and I like it and I just like to look at it and hold it because it's, it's like nice it's comfortable it feels good in my hands like a sweet little like a sweet little cupcake baby this video is going weird places and my wife's looking at me like what the heck is this guy doing all right I'm going to end this video here before I say any more things <laughs> one two three clap <laughs>